Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Vlad and in today's video we're going to be unboxing and setting up the EasyViz CP1 smart home camera. Let's jump into the video. Now before we get started, just a quick disclaimer. This video is not sponsored in any way. EasyViz has sent me the product to unbox and review, but I have not been paid to say anything about the brand. So all the views and opinions expressed in this video are my own. Let's take a quick look at the box and the packaging. At the top, we have the brand and the camera model name, as well as the description of what it is, a smart home camera. We have a photo of the product itself and we have some information at the bottom. It can record in 2K resolution and it has a 4 megapixel sensor. We can also see that there is an app available on the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. If we take a look on the side, we can see two images. One image shows that the camera can rotate or pan and tilt and the other image sort of implies that it has motion sensing or tracking. On the back of the box, there is just some regulatory labels and barcodes, including the device serial number. And on the other side, we have some more information about the features or specs of the device. We can see that the camera has a motorized pan and tilt for 360 degree visual coverage. It has motion detection, smart tracking, you can view it from anywhere as long as you are connected to the internet. It supports 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. It has night vision up to 10 meters. It has two-way talk capability. It records in the H.265 codec, which results in smaller file sizes, meaning it can store more footage on the memory card. And of course, it supports micro SD cards for local storage and it has cloud storage in selected countries. Now, of course, these are not all of the features, but if you want to check out the full specs, I will leave a link to the EasyViz website in the description of the video. This particular camera retails for about $80 in Australia, so it's actually a pretty cheap price in my opinion, and that probably explains why the camera only supports 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi and not 5 gigahertz as well. So let's go ahead and open the box and see what we have inside. First up, I'm going to take everything out of the box and then we can take a closer look at all of the contents individually. Okay, let's take a look at the camera itself. At first glance, it's small, it's compact, and it kind of reminds me of the Minions. It has a nice smooth matte finish. The only part that is glossy is the circle surrounding the camera and the sensors. On the back of the camera, we have a speaker, an ethernet connection, and a micro USB connection for power. While most products on the market today are using USB Type-C, I'm not surprised that the EasyViz CP1 is using a micro USB connection given the cost of the device. I would classify this as a budget-friendly security camera. We've got a quick start guide with a QR code where you can access the full digital user manual. Now let's pop that aside for a moment and take a look at what else comes in the box. Then we have the power adapter, which is rated at 5 volts and 2 amps. And it has a USB type A connection, so it's a pretty standard adapter, but it is nice and compact, so it's not bulky and it won't take up too much space on your power board. We've got a micro USB cable for power, which is pretty long, and I'm going to guess it is about 2 meters. And last, we have a wall mount with screws, a mounting template if you plan on mounting this camera on the wall or a ceiling, and some more regulatory information. So to power the camera on, 
I'm going to plug the micro USB cable into the back of the camera and the other end into the power adapter. Once that is done, I'm going to plug the camera into the power and download the app so I can set it up. Once you have the app installed, the first thing you will need to do is create an account with EasyViz so that you can securely access your camera. Just a quick side note before we begin. I am using an Android device, so being mindful that the setup process might be slightly different on iOS, but the majority of the steps should be the same. Once you are logged into the app, you will need to tap on the plus symbol at the top right corner and select Add Device. You will then be presented with a list of devices that EasyViz makes, but in my case, I'm going to select Cameras. Then I need to scan the QR code on the bottom of the camera, or alternatively, I can tap on the icon in the top right corner and manually enter the serial number. Once you have scanned the QR code, you should see your device pop up on the screen. You need to tick the box that says device is powered on and then tap on next. Next up, you need to connect the camera to the internet. This screen will give you some more information on how to do that. Tap on start. On the next screen, you may be asked to enable your location permission so that you can configure the Wi-Fi. Tap on open location permission and then select the option that you would like. Once you get to the next screen, you need to make sure that the LED light on the camera is flashing blue and then go ahead and tick the box next to the indicator flashes blue. Then tap on next. Next, you should see a screen where you will need to select your Wi-Fi network name and then you need to enter your Wi-Fi password. So you need to make sure that you have a modem that supports 2.4 gigahertz. Refer to your modem user manual if you have any trouble with this or contact your service provider. After you have entered your Wi-Fi password, tap on next and follow the on-screen prompts. Allow the device a couple of minutes to connect to Wi-Fi. Then give your device a name if you like and select the location where the camera will be installed. This is useful if you are installing multiple cameras in different rooms. Then tap on next. The settings will now be uploaded to the camera and once the device has been added successfully, you should see a preview of your camera on the screen. Here, you can configure some additional settings such as time zone, date format, and whether or not you want audio. Once you are done with your selections, tap on next. If you get another screen popping up asking you to change the camera password, you can change the password or you can just tap the back button. You should then be taken to the home screen where you will see the name of your camera and a preview. You can tap on the preview to view the live camera feed. Once the live camera feed loads, you will see a set of controls down the bottom that will allow you to take a snapshot, record live footage, pan and tilt, initialize or start two-way audio, and select the quality of the stream. There are also a couple of other options which I'm not going to cover in this video in order to keep the video short. If you tap on the video stream, you will see a settings button in the top right corner. Tap on this and you will see a range of settings and options that you can configure for your camera. In the settings, you can change things such as the camera name, audio, status lights, infrared lights, notifications, 
motion tracking, storage, perform firmware updates, and more. Next up, I'm going to show you how to install the micro SD card. At first, I was very confused and I could not work out where to install the micro SD card. It was not at the bottom or on the side. This is when I had to refer to the user manual. I discovered that in order to access the memory card slot, I had to tilt the camera portion all the way up until a memory card slot is revealed. This is pretty good in a way because the memory card is hidden and not easily accessible. I will note that there is also a factory reset button next to the memory card slot. So make sure you don't press this button unless you really want to factory reset your camera. Once you insert the memory card, you will need to turn the camera off and then turn it back on. So to initialize the memory card, you need to go to the camera settings and then tap on storage status. You will notice that the message on the memory card says unformatted. Tap on that and then on the next screen, tap on the red format button. This will delete everything on the memory card and format the memory card for use with the camera. This can take a few minutes, so give it some time. We are now done with the main setup. In order to make the camera record continuously, we need to do one more thing. We need to tap on the shield button and we need to set the camera mode to armed. You should notice the camera status change from disarmed to armed. That means it will record continuously. That is all for today's video guys. Thank you so much for watching if you have made it this far. If this video has helped you in any way, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. If you have any questions, comments or feedback, let me know in the comments section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I'll catch you in the next one.